Welcome back to the garage again. We had some really good weather uh, the other day in Ireland. Um, it was getting up to upwards of 27 degrees. Uh, so we decided to take the, the van on a, on a trip. Um, and we got, a, we, got about, we got about an hour away from the house and we were uh, on the motorway uh, in fourth gear. And suddenly the oil pressure light came on on the dashboard. And that is, that's not something you ever want to see uh, in a, a van or a Beetle or any kind of uh, air-cooled vehicle. Because um, usually it means one of two things. Either, uh, well, my setup is a bit different, but in a standard setup, it means you've lost all your oil pressure uh, and the the engine is close to self-destruction. Uh, so it's a sign that you should pull over and stop immediately. Uh, so that's what I did. Um, but on my van, um, there's, there's a little bit of a, a different setup. I have a, a temperature dipstick installed, uh, which is connected to the oil pressure switch. So that light will actually come on when the temperature gets to dangerous levels. Um, it's, it's more of a warning thing. It's not, it's supposed to tell you to stop before you do serious damage to your engine. Um, and I yeah, pulled over the side of the motorway, had a look and yeah, lo and behold, the, the contact on the temperature dipstick had gone all the way around um, and it had, it, had, uh, it had caused the light to come on. It's the first time I've ever seen that happen. Um, so I'm thinking it was something to do with the hot weather we were having um, and maybe some poor you know, ventilation in the engine bay perhaps. But um, anyway, it sort of, uh, sort of spooked me a bit. So we decided to kind of come, come back home. And I was thinking about it for a while and I thought, well, be a good idea to install some gauges in the van so we actually know what's going on with the engine um, temperature wise and luckily uh, you can do that there's a company called VDO which they make uh, they make a lot of these gauges in fact they, they make a lot of gauges for, for Volkswagen in general but um, you can buy uh, temperature gauges and temperature probes and senders and things um, and also oil pressure gauges which I have here as well um, <clears throat> now uh, I'm, w I'm well aware that these gauges are not, uh, they're not the most accurate in the world. They, they won't give you like a true picture of the state of your engine, but they give you kind of a good sort of a baseline. So you know what, you know what's going on, you know what's normal in your engine. And then if you see the gauge going above what's normal, then you know it's, well, okay, maybe it's time to ease off a bit or go into a higher gear to increase the, uh, increase the fan speed. Um, so I say higher gear, I meant lower gear. <laughs> lower gear to uh, increase the fan speed and the airflow and cool your engine a bit better. Um, so what I've got here, yeah, I've got a temperature gauge, which I'm going to install today, and an oil pressure gauge as well. They're pretty simple. There's a fair bit of wiring, but it all it's, it's not too difficult. Um, uh, you need to basically run a wire uh, from the sender probe, which is, which is screwed into the sump, uh, the oil sump on the bottom of the engine, uh, which is... It's not really the best place to get an idea of the temperature, but as I said, we're only kind of trying to get a rough baseline of what's normal for the engine. Um, if you really want to do it properly and go crazy, you can, you can, you know, it involves like drilling holes and, and tapping, uh, you know, tapping out holes in your, in your engine case. And that's, yeah, that's, that's not something I want to get into. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got the, I've already installed the sump, uh, sump plate sender and that connects with a wire uh, to this terminal here and then we've we're going to draw some power as well from um, from the van um, and we need to make sure that that's power that only comes on when the key is turned on so we need to find a, a, a terminal on the fuse box that is alive when the key comes on because we don't want our gauge running all the time and draining out the battery um, and then there's a ground here obviously as well and then this black terminal up here is uh, that's where you plug in the lights for the gauge so you're gonna you're gonna want to wire that into your um, light switch to do it properly and um, so it comes on with the lights on your dashboard when you when you turn the lights on um, yeah and the oil pressure gauge is pretty much the same um, this is the sender for the oil pressure gauge I haven't uh, screwed that in yet um, but that goes in, in in place of your oil pressure switch inside the engine and then um, you you plug the, you wire the, the gauge here uh, where, it, where it says, you can, can't really see it there exactly, but it says G uh, is stamped onto the sender. 
So you wire the gauge in there and then you also wire your oil pressure light in there as well um, at the same time so you can continue to have the oil pressure warning light on the dashboard. Um, <clears throat> now I've got two kind of six meter lengths of wire here as well so probably I'm just going to run run the whole lot of them um, because I don't know how long the van is only about four meters long but uh, just to give us an extra bit of leeway you know because we'll be doing kind of snaky runs in and out uh, underneath the van. Um, I've also got uh, some some wire wrapping here to make up a kind of a loom so this just to protect the wires um, from rubbing you know against uh, metal parts and, and heat and things like that. Um, we've also got a little plate for the dashboard so the two gauges will go in here and they can hang underneath the dashboard um, and then the gauges kind of screw in at the back with these plastic uh, circular pieces here. Um, yeah, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I've got a little wiring diagram here for myself, which I drew up. Um, but I think the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll make up the mini little kind of wiring loom for this setup uh, outside the van, and then we'll, we'll install it. Um, I'm not going to put any connector terminals on yet because I don't know what length um, it's going to be, and I don't want to, you know, I don't have a load of slack wires uh, run, running around the place. Um, so we'll, yeah, we'll make that up outside, and then we'll put the terminals on once we decide the, the correct placement for everything inside the van. So yeah, we'll, we'll get on with uh, making up that loom now. I'm going to use the red wire for the temperature sender. You know, red heat makes sense. Um, and then I'm going to use the, the black wire here for the oil pressure sender. So uh, you know, uh, we'll definitely know which one is which. So yeah, I'm just putting the, just putting the wire in here through the, through the wrap. And I've got all the two wires running through the um, the wire rack now. So I'm gonna just make crimp up the um, the end that connects to the to the send to the uh, oil temperature sender, um, and then we'll figure out how to route the one into the engine bay for the oil pressure sender. Um, so I'm just get the insulation off here. It's a pity I don't have red connectors. No. Color coordinated. Um, <clears throat> crimp this end up. Okay, that's ready to attach onto the sender. We got the wires come up into the van now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've got the gauges here, and they're in their little. Um, their little, their little holder. Uh, so I'm going to put some spade terminals on the end here. Um, and yeah, like then just uh, kind of mock it up on the dashboard to just see where we want to, all the other wires to go. So put these guys on here now. Also, the most important thing before you start messing around with anything behind the dashboard or wires or Electrical wires or electrical wise, uh, disconnect your battery. <laughs> so you don't want to you don't want to damage yourself or any of the components that you're putting into the van. Right, got some solid crimping on there now, so we can um, put these uh, these terminals. Well, we're not actually going to connect everything up here yet, but uh, what we need to do next is kind of solder in a wire from the key on power here uh, onto the gauges. Um, so we we'll get the we we'll get the soldering iron out on, on that and get cracking. Thank 
That's a good, good joint there. Um, I'll just clean off the soldering iron. Now I'm just going to make a little jumper connection here, so uh, it just saves wiring. Uh, we're going to essentially scavenge uh, a positive feed from um, one side of the gauge, or from one gauge to another here, so um, just get the wire strippers. These wires being uh, reluctant to come off. <laughs> There we go. Right. So this is a positive connector for one side. So I cannot recommend enough having decent crimping tools as well. Like I've I've bought like cheap ones before and they're just not worth it. Um, so you end up having to go back and redo connections and things, and yeah, to have something something substantial and easy to use. Yeah. There. So you can see what's kind of happening here. Um, we're going to have two wires coming in here uh, from the key on power. And uh, then that'll just be feeding this other, feeding the oil pressure gauge with power. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do the same thing for the lights um, and for the ground wires as well. So uh, just getting, you know, wiring things up cleverly. Okay, that should be good. We've got our t a double connector there now, so we can run the run the gauge off one power feed. Now I'm just going to put this mounting plate on for the gauges, so it's going to hang it down from here. Uh, I need to drill some holes just in the dashboard for the screws for it. Um, so I've marked out some places for the holes and just making sure there's no wires up there where I'm drilling. There's not. Let's get the drill on a low speed as well. There we go. I haven't destroyed anything. The next one. Right. Now I'm just going to screw screw the uh, gauge plate on. In now, so we'll be able to attach the gauges in there. Now, uh, I'm just going to make up a grounding wire here for the for the gauges. Um, I'm going to take the there's a number of free grounding posts on the back of the dashboard here. Uh, the dash pod actually you can't see them, but uh, there's a lot of them there for connecting in for grounding like accessories and other things like this. So, um, I've roughly measured out kind of a length of wire here, so just kind of cut that off. And we're going to do the same the same trick again, making a jumper wire between the two grounding posts again on the on the gauges here. Um, and we've also got our wires kind of loosely rooted through the the gauge uh, holder here. Um, so we've got everything kind of sitting ready to be connected. So now I'm going to make up the ground cable. Um, so we're going to you're reusing the the tried and trusted uh, jumper method here. So that's one end of it. This is the this will be the end that goes onto the dashboard. And then this is where it splits and connects the two gauges together.
Yeah, it's, it's certainly easier to do this when the wires are not on the van. I'm going to have fun cleaning up all the bits of spent insulation and wire that are all over the, the floor here. Yeah. I think this is why, uh, so why modern manufacturers and cars, they switch to block connectors. You don't really find these, uh, you don't really find spade connectors anymore on, on new cars. Because your uh, this method, your dashboard ends up looking like some kind of improvised explosive device. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So we're going to route this in behind the dashboard and then connect it across uh, between both gauges. So we'll get that set up now. Okay. I'm just going to get this ground wire onto one of the grounding post back here and um, it's a good one but I try not to disturb anything while I'm back here too much because these wires like to come off um so we'll just neat, neatly thread this back through here now I'm just putting the grounding post on for the lights here so the grounding posts are right in the middle of the dash pod. Um, so there's a quite a, a quite a number of them, and they're all there's plenty of things to connect into there. So. Now I'm going to wire in the lights, um, the the back lights for the gauge. Uh, so the way this is going to work is, I'm going to take some power from um, from this wire here, uh, which is normally connected onto the light switch, which is live when. Um, it's a terminal, it's a little terminal on the light switch. I forget exactly what the name of it is, um, but it is numbered, I think you can look it up. Anyway, um, that, that terminal receives power when the lights are switched on. So what will happen is when we take another little jumper wire off here to the power on the, the lights, then uh, the lights on the gauges will come on when uh, with the rest of the back lights on the, on the dashboard. So well, that's the idea anyway. So. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to snip this little spade connector off here and put um put a replacement terminal on and uh feed a wire off that as well onto the onto the backs of the gauges. Now I'm just going to snip the end off here and as much as I can on. That should be a good little connector there. Um, so we'll put this back onto the light switch and then uh, we'll make another jumper at the other end for the, the lights on the, on the new gauges. Okay, I decided to just uh, take the dash, the dash pod out here just to get better access to the light switch at the back because it was proving very difficult to get the little connector to go on. Um, it doesn't take that long to get the dash pod out anyway. It's, it's easy enough to do um, and might be a good idea to have it out in any case, just in case we need to, you know, <clears throat> move, move some other wires around and stuff. There we go. <laughs> Random bits of things start falling out at this point. Yeah. Out she comes. To also take the speedometer cable out to like get at everything here. So, uh, 
good. Don't have to snag anything. Okay, I've got much better access now. I can get this wire in. Right, getting it on now. And it's much easier when you can just <laughs> you have access to all dimensions. Down. Yeah, so again, this is the this is the terminal that has power when the the light switch is pulled on like that. And um, so basically, there to provide light sphere dashboard. All right. So there we go. That's that connected, and uh, we just need to do up the other end now. Right. Okay, that's the, the last of the wires I put on there. I just fed that uh, wire through from the light the light switch um, and it's just jumpered it here. Um, so I'm gonna connect connect everything up together now um, and put put the gauge, the, the pods into the their mountings here. Um, <clears throat> and then after that, we'll go and have a look at putting this pressure switch into the engine bay. Right, we've got a, We've got a mess of wires coming out here, but uh, it'll all make sense in a second. Um, so the red one, which we ran from the sender, plug that into the S terminal marked S on the on the gauge. So that's on in there, and then we want to take our ground. Um, and put that onto the put that onto the negative terminal there on the gauge. And then we're going to take our power feed and that goes to the positive side of the gauge there. Right, so that's that's basically all the wiring for, for the temperature gauge there but except for the lights obviously so we'll wire those up now and you, know, you can put uh, the ground or the positive on either of those terminals it doesn't matter so I'll just uh, pick one that's the ground and that's the power there for the lights now we're just going to basically repeat the procedure on the other gauge I'm going to get anything caught here so we'll just uh, put this guy in the right way around would be helpful. Um, get everything back there. We'll get the pressure gauge here now. You can see these little uh, plastic things that screw on here. That's that's what holds it onto the, the face plate here. And so again, start with our. Well, we'll put our ground wire on this time, um, and then this is the wire from the pressure sender. So that's it there, and our positive feed should be around here somewhere. Yes, it is. This is basically well, where we jump it from the other gauge. And, then the, and the same thing again with the lights. All right, that's the ground on for the lights there. Um, so that kind of, that completes the wiring pretty much. Um, so we just need to yeah, get those guys set up in there. I'll, I'll leave them kind of loose for the moment. Yeah, we can rotate them as, as needs be and then screw them home, but yeah, we'll, we'll just leave them loose in there for now uh, and we'll start wiring up the, the pressure sender at the back. Oh yeah, vitally important. Remember to put these things on before you put all the wires on. Um, yeah, because I have to go and take all those wires off now and <laughs> screw these, screw this back on. So yeah, one thing to 
remember in your haste to install the gauge. Now, I'm going to just take the old uh, oil pressure switch off here. And once we got it out, we'll, uh, we'll swap it out for the oil pressure sender unit. So some oil might come out here when we unscrew this. It's a 24 mil uh, nut on this, it's quite big. Um, I think the pressure sender uh, is a smaller a smaller nut on it, a 17 mil nut. Steel oil pressure switch. Nothing wrong with it though. Keep it, it still works. It's handy to have spares. Just keep the little copper washer as well for it. So now we can take our pressure sender, start putting it in. In order to put it, there is a copper washer for this too, so we need to, we need to put that on. In. Got a 17 mil spanner on this here, um, just to tighten it up. Um, it's kind of getting a bit awkward actually to get in at this here. Right, um, now I'm just doing some more tightening here. It's uh, an interesting trick you can do over to flip the flip the spanner around to get a, a grip on it. Um, otherwise you run out of room, uh, it gets a bit awkward as I get closer as well to the, the case, so yeah, we'll just uh, we'll keep at it. Okay, the next thing is to put some ring terminals on here. Um, so these three wires, uh, one of them is, that's to the hot oil uh, dipstick sender, so I want to keep that. Um, and this is to the oil light on the dashboard, which obviously I want to keep as well. Um, and then this is the oil pressure gauge wire, which we uh, rooted in here earlier. Uh, so I need to put ring terminals on, on, the, on all of these here. And uh, then connect them up onto the oil pressure sender there and uh, close them home with the little uh, plastic, um, little plastic things that screw down over them. Now there's two uh, terminals on this uh, sender. One is labeled G here, uh, and the other one's labeled WK. So G is for the for the gauge, um, and then WK is for the oil light on the dashboard. So what we're going to do is connect. Um, we'll put one ring terminal on the gauge. Uh, that'll go over. Uh, that'll go over the G. Terminal. Just keep our wires out of the way here. It's tidy. We'll get that one on there. So got our little screw ties here. Secure that in, and then these two are on my hot oil, hot oil dipstick, and going to the oil pressure light on the dashboard. So we'll just uh, put those two on top of each other. Yeah. All right, that's it. Okay, testing time. Um, let's just make sure that the, the back lights on the gauges work first. Cool, nice one. Uh, it's all illuminated with a nice yellow glow. Um, next, we'll just put the key on power. Right. Yeah, I think that's working. Um, it's hard to see, but the pressure gauge definitely moved up there. So I'd say both of them are getting power. But in order to really see these gauges in action, um, we'll have to take it for a test drive. 
Here we are out in the van uh, testing out the gauges. And the pressure gauge is working well there. Uh, it it kind of moves with the engine RPMs, goes up and down as you expect. But it normally sits around one or so when it's idling. Um, the temperature gauge is a bit of a different story. It's uh, taken a while to, to come off the line, but it is working. Um, but at least, you know, we'll know uh, we'll know what the normal operating temperature of the engine is um, according to that gauge at least. Um, so that'll be that'll give us you know a good idea if there's any any trouble on the horizon before before it becomes a problem. So the gauges are working and we we'll, uh, we have a way now of um, monitoring the of our engine. Right. So once again, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in a future video.